Well guys, we got something a little bit different today. We don't have Camaros and we don't have Jeeps. We are doing computer mods. So I had been editing on my circa 2012 desktop and it was not having it. So naturally I reached out to my buddies, John Ross and Jake over at Watch JR Go and 100% Jake shot him a message and said, guys, what do I need to be looking for um, specs wise for, com for a laptop that I can edit on that will be nice and quick. And both of them agreed and immediately shot new MacBook. That was the only answer they gave me. So naturally I went out and bought not a new MacBook. Um, ended up with an MSI uh, GF 65 thin um, seemed like a pretty decent um, laptop for uh, what you got. You got a Core i7 10th gen, an NVIDIA GTX 1660 graphics card, and a 512 gig SSD. The only issue was you only have eight gigs of RAM and most of your editing software is going to require, you know, a minimum of 16 to be happy. So knowing that was the only big issue with it, went ahead and got it and got some Corsair Vengeance uh, DDR4 uh, 216 gig RAM cards here. And I figured I did not want to open this thing up multiple times. So, went ahead and got the one terabyte XPG Pro um, one terabyte SSD for it. So, I am definitely not a laptop technician, but surely it can't be that much different than, you know, putting a motor in a Jeep, right? So, we've got some screws we're gonna take out and see what happens. Um, and it looks like one of our screws here is covered up with a factory warranty seal, of course. So we get to void that warranty real quickly. Um, one thing kind of cool on this, which of course is pretty common with gaming laptops, is the you know copper heat pipes you can see going over the processor and um, GPU. But we're gonna get this thing open and see uh, see how badly we can mess this thing up. And I guess if you'd never see this video, that means it didn't reboot and I was never able to edit this. So um, if if you don't see this, that's that's what happened. So let's get the rest of these screws out. And that's apparently the one that really matters. You can take all the other screws out, but this center one apparently is just the deal breaker for them. So let's see if we can get most of these on the towel here. And I think we did. I'm hoping this thing is going to come apart relatively nicely. Um, I, like I said, have very little experience with computers. We've got a number zero Phillips and a random plastic scraper here that is hopefully going to work for pulling this thing apart. Um, you've got this back hinge cover that apparently needs to come off first and does without too much drama and it does not look like we broke any clips. So we'll set that off to the side and you've got on your side with the ports, um, 
the cases kind of molded around some of them. So we need to be working from the opposite side first. So let's see if we can made some big crunchy noises. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, we're going to work around the front. It seems to be coming apart as expected. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna tip it off and we're in. Um, uh, so, um, we need to, I kind of did a little bit of research on the importance of unplugging the battery or not. Luckily, this one is relatively easy to get to. Um, so we're going to go ahead and see if we can use this same tool to push the battery connector off the motherboard without taking everything else out with it. Awesome, okay, we are disconnected now. Just want to make sure it is not partially touching and we should be good. Like I said, I don't know that this is going to be a how to or maybe a how not to, but we'll hopefully get it handled either way. So we've got our original 512 SSD um, in that first slot. This is kind of cool that you've got dual slots for SSDs. And like I said, I don't really think um, I'm going to be using that full 512, um, but who knows? I just didn't want to have to open it up a second time with the clips with the possibility of breaking or cracking things. So that's why I went ahead and just got this and was going to throw it in. So we're going to dip this into its connector and Go ahead and screw that back down. <clears throat> and this X PG um, SSD did come with this little heat plate heat spreader. Uh, did a little bit of research on whether or not it's a good idea to run them and got kind of mixed reviews. You know, I'm not doing any big crazy gaming or anything like that. So, um, you know, some people were saying it holds in more heat than it, you know, works as a heat sink. But my thought is it looks kind of cool and I'm going to just throw it on. So, because why not? It came with it and cool stickers equal five horsepower on vehicles. So surely this equals some sort of computing power in the computer world. So we're gonna try to line this thing up 
as best we can. And I guess that's a thing. I have no idea if that does anything or not, but it will look cool through the vents in the case, if nothing else. And that's what we're all about, is looking cool without really performing. Okay, on to our RAM. We've got our Corsair Vengeance DDR4, um, two 16 gig. So we'll be sitting from the factory single eight gig, we'll be sitting at 32 gigs. So that should be more than enough for the video editing that I'm gonna be doing with this thing. Um, shouldn't, I'm, I'm not a, a gamer. So, um, you know, the two, the two 16 should be more than I ever need. I think this thing maxes out at 64. I was getting kind of conflicting information whether you could run 64 or 32 and 32 was enough money that that was kind of as much as I wanted to spend on it. So I didn't want to pay to play for the big 64 gig. So that's why we ended up with the two 16s, which like I said, will be way more than I need. Um, so we're going to throw this in. And hopefully if any computer people are watching, they aren't completely horrified by my install methods. But I think we are done. We've got our cool little heat shield, heat sink, whatever you want to call it. So we've now sitting at one and a half terabytes and 32 gigs of RAM. This will be the most powerful computer I've ever personally had. Like I said, I was previously editing on a 2012 desktop all in one that was just not having any sort of video editing. So we're gonna go ahead and throw our battery connector back on and uh, hope we don't have sparks or smoke. I don't really know if that's a thing in the computer world. And we've got our bottom case which is kind of cool, nice, possibly aluminum, maybe plastic. I don't know, looks kind of shiny. Um, we are going to go over to our, here's where those USB type C ports are that we kind of had to be careful of since the case is molded around them, not just through the bottom. So we are going to tuck this side on first in theory. Like I said, this is probably not a how to, more of a how not to do it. Oof, okay, you've got to go up real high with the bottom half of the case. There we go, okay. I just didn't have it swung up high enough and we should just be good to start pushing all of our clips back into place. There we go. Lots of crunchy noises are supposedly good. I think we've got some across the back. We're possibly there. We're going to throw the hinge cover back on now since we've got it up. Uh, 
All right, guys, promise one of these times I'm going to get it. Ideally, I'm going to cut all of this out so it'll look like I did it perfectly on the first try. Okay, gosh, we got the hinge cover on. <clears throat> we are ready to throw some screws in it. And I should probably make sure the thing boots up and works before I put all the screws back in. But I'm not really gonna know what to do if it doesn't boot up other than just put all the stock stuff back in it. So we're just gonna commit to it and see what happens. Because like I said, I don't do computer stuff ever. So I'm not really sure if you have to do anything after you install these things or if it's just good to go. We're gonna hope for the good to go thing because everything's new and surely it's just like that where it just works. So that's what we're hoping for because I don't really have a plan B on if it doesn't work. So we'll get these screws in and we'll hit the power button and see if it does anything. If it doesn't do anything, we're gonna have to make that factory seal look like it's still sealed and then return it and claim it stopped working to try to get a new one so we can edit. That's the only game plan at this point. And I'm hopeful that all the screws are the same length because I didn't look at that at all when I pulled it apart. They all look pretty small, but I have no idea. Okay, that is back together and pretty easy actually. It was not too painful. So let me get this camera down off the tripod and we will boot this thing up. All right, so the thing definitely, definitely booted up. This is not like my second attempt now booting it up. You know, it's, you know, it definitely didn't not come on the very first time I put it back together. And then I definitely didn't pull the back panel off for a second time and recheck the battery connection. And oddly enough, it was connected correctly and it still wouldn't boot up. So I plugged power into it and then it booted up immediately. So I don't know if that's a computer thing. Like I said, I do not do anything with computers build wise replacement of parts so for all i know that's a normal thing that it won't boot until you've got power from the wall hooked up to it but that seems kind of odd and incorrect but regardless hooked up power hit the button we have the thing booting up um we'll go ahead and jump in here and hit our about and I don't know if you guys can see but we've got 32 gigs of installed RAM so that's kind of exciting and I definitely didn't have to you know look up a YouTube video on how to 
make a second drive work and get it to configure, you know, and it didn't show me how to go to the disk manager and format the drive and, you know, name it and all of that. I definitely knew how to do that. That's why it's already popped up there. But once you get all of that done, you have a cool second hard drive or excuse me, SSD, not a hard drive. So everything works, even though I split the case for the second time, like I said, I didn't want to. And um, even though I apparently didn't need to and just needed to plug the thing in, even though the battery is around half. So let me know in the comments, is that a normal thing for it to not boot back up after having the battery out or parts unplugged? Or was that just a weird thing that happened to me, of course? So. Hope you guys like that little change of pace and we hopefully have a better performing computer for editing. And that's what I got this thing for. So let me know in the comments, is that how it's supposed to work on the boot or not? And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.